Shalom friends. So Passover is coming and this is probably the most hectic time of the year. So there are two very practical ideas that I'm personally planning on doing to capitalize on the opportunity that Passover presents and I wanted to share them with all of you. And this is really is a huge opportunity because remember that from the Western perspective, time progresses forward linearly. Yet from the Torah perspective, time ascends like a, a helix of repeating patterns and cycles which are illuminated by the biblical roots at the foundational level of the spiral. So the same energy from the biblical roots infuses our time even now. So just as we were catapulted from the 49th level of impurity before we left Egypt to the holiness of angels at Mount Sinai, Passover is a time where the potential exists for quantum growth this huge burst of transformative growth that would seem impossible to the rational mind. But we just have to open our hearts to the truth that such growth really is possible. Okay, so let me cut to it. Here's the first one. We're about to enter Pesach and we're in the stages of cleaning our home and our hearts for leavened bread. And it isn't only the physical leavening that we're searching for, but the spiritual leavening that we're seeking to purge from our souls as well. We've discussed this before. The softness, the arrogance, those illusions of control, all that stuff. And this is a lot easier said than done. In many ways, it's a lot easier scrubbing your floors than scrubbing our souls. But a friend of mine shared an approach with me that he's taking that we're going to do in my home as well. And that's what I want to share with you. So this evening, after our homes have been cleaned, God willing, from everything chametz, we're performing a beautiful ritual called bedikat chametz. The traditional tools of this searching for the chametz can be, it's 10 pieces of chametz of whatever bread or crackers or whatever that we have. And we've intentionally hit it, pre-hidden them in our homes. We have a feather to brush the chametz onto a spoon with. Everybody has a different roll that they do and a little baggie to wrap it up and burn it the next morning. By the way, write down where you hide that bread because everybody has a memory from their childhood frantically looking for that last piece that you hid and you can't find. So don't let that happen. But anyways, we usually uh, wrap up each piece of bread in either a piece of paper or a napkin. And that is where this new ritual comes in. Usually the paper's blank. But this year, I wrote up 10 attributes that are the spiritual equivalent of chametz that I want to purge from my heart, no differently than I want to purge the bread from my home. And so here they are. Anger, fear, doubt, disappointment, resentment, jealousy, lashon hara, right, that's gossip, Arrogance, expectations, that's a big one. All the things we think should be. And laziness, something that I suffer from not infrequently. Anyways, so those are the ones that I chose. But everybody can look within and choose their own. And wrap up your chametz inside of that. And when you burn them, have in mind that you're not only burning the bread, but those attributes themselves, that, that puffed up arrogance in our souls. We're burning out those qualities from our very essence. I thought that was beautiful, adds a beautiful dimension to searching for the chametz. So that's one. The other is about counting the Omer. Now we could just do a whole fellowship on that subject alone, but in short, the Omer are the 49 days, the 50 days really, that connect Passover to Shavuot, to the giving of the Torah. Now, you count each of them with this beautiful blessing, and if you miss even one, you should, of course, keep counting, but without a blessing. But time is running short, so let's not get lost on that right now. We find this law in chapter 23, verse 15 of the book of Exodus. The Torah writes, And you shall count for yourselves from the morrow of the Shabbat, from the day that you bring the Omer offering that's raised, seven complete weeks there shall be until the morrow of the seventh week, you shall count 50 days. Okay, so it really, it's a beautiful ritual and a great opportunity to, to the family, for the family to come together and to count. So if, by the way, if you want an Omer sheet with the days and the blessings that you can print up, we'll be sending them out to the WhatsApp group, the Telegram group. You can reach out to me personally for whatever reason you don't get it. I'll try to send it to you, but the holiday's approaching fast, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to all my messages. So the best way is to join one of the groups. It should be in the message below, but anyways. Many of you know about my own journey where I lost nearly 
40 pounds in just a few months. So, you know, it was this sheet here every day that I kept to it. I I'm planning on making a video about this whole thing soon, but uh, in a couple of sentences, I made this chart and I set one goal for 90 days and it had to be achievable, but realistic. So I chose to only eat between noon and 7 p.m. Anyways, there's a lot more to it, but uh, that's for another time. So I thought to myself, here we are going to 49 days that we're counting. The 50th day being Shavuot. So biblically, this goes from the barley offering at Passover time to the wheat offering at Shavuot time. And historically, the barley was considered to be a food that was used to feed the animals. And wheat is a food for humans. So this is a time to grow in exactly that way. So I did some serious thinking about how I can harness these days that I'm counting for spiritual growth. Not just the conventional ways of spiritual growth, which, which we have, which we could talk about, but a way tailored for me and my challenges. Now, while I am 100% sure that I'm going to use these days for something spiritually, I'm not sure 100% about yet what I'm going to do, but my heart told me that it should be something connected to prayer. I mean, prayer is uh, one of the most pronounced things that separates us from the animals, and it's something that I'm trying to work on and grow in anyways. So I printed up this chart, and each day that I start my morning off with half hour of, of meditation and talking to Hashem, and I'm not just talking about synagogue and prayer, that's another thing. I'm talking about my own personal time set aside and enshrined for meditation and for just just talking to Hashem from my heart. Well, each day that I do that will be another check. And I go to Minyan and I pray, you know, I pray from the prayer book, but I don't feel like I pour out my heart to Hashem and converse with Him nearly as often as I'd like. So here's that opportunity. So, okay, those are the two rituals that I wanted to share with you. If you want this, you can make it on your own or you can ask me, I'll send it to you happily. And I just, uh, <coughs> I want to take this opportunity to bless all of you and to bless your families, that you should each experience your own redemption, your own release from the bondages that may be constraining you and the attributes that are within you that you don't want within there. You don't want those things in there. This is the time to purge it, to burn it, and to grow. So I bless all of you that you should be able to do that and harness these days to come closer to Hashem and closer to each other. So be in touch, my friends. Reach out with your questions, your prayers, your thoughts, anything. Lashana Habab Yerushalayim next year in Jerusalem.